Thanks. Good morning, everyone. So I'm going to walk you through how to use Mapillary, what Mapillary is, and give you kind of a more practical, hands-on guide uh, directly for how to map with it, be effective, capture imagery. So we're going to focus less on what the platform does and more on how you can get started. And we're going to also be out capturing Mapillary imagery, meeting at the registration desk after this session. So if you want to really get hands-on, you can also meet us there. So in one phrase, Mapillary is the street-level imagery platform that scales and automates mapping. This is where Mapillary is. Uh, Zoomed out, it looks pretty global. If you zoom in, there are gaps, and the user community fills those gaps. Somewhere like Budapest today, you will see tons of imagery covering the bridges, uh, probably something from about every month going back a few years. And if you go somewhere, let's say, like northern Alaska, you may find very few images, some, but places where no one has gone and mapped. So that explains kind of the differences here. But we're going to start off with a little bit of a quiz. I've taken a few pictures from Mapillary, and I want to see if anyone can guess where in the world these are located. So this one, any guesses? Go ahead and shout it out. Japan. We got it. This one's from Tokyo. And the second one? Not Austria. It is Budapest. Yep. A third one? Not Morocco, not Sudan, not Greece, I heard over here what? Not Libya, no, no, it's Tunisia, <laughs> I think someone might have said it, I'm not sure. And the last one, yes, Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. So the idea with Mapillary, just like the images you saw in the quiz here, these can be from any camera that has a geotag. This can be a dash cam, it can be an action camera, a mobile phone, or something that you mount on top of a car, costing, I don't know, 100 times as much as your, uh, your GoPro. So a lot of different devices. Some of these images are forward-facing. Some will give you that full immersive 360 view. Uh, but all of them work together to help map the world. So there's kind of a look at some of those devices. And the result of uploading that imagery is creating open data. You see on the, the right here is the semantic segmentation. Uh, so this one's manually traced. It looks really nice. But that's used to train the model. And Mapillary will recognize all these things, uh, removing people and cars from the scene while geolocating things like traffic signs uh, and other pieces of infrastructure, utility poles, street lamps, and many more. So let's talk about how to get started with Mapillary. The easiest way is to download the mobile app. There's a lot of other cameras out there we'll take a look at. But as of right now, there's no sign up needed to get started. So you can install the app, immediately walk outside, and start capturing images. It used to ask you to sign in. It won't now. So it'll ask you to sign in only when you get to upload. That's a great way to get started without having to go through a whole process first. And it's going to ask you for location services to be enabled. You'll get a couple other permission requests, like notifications and storage. And the most important thing is make sure you go outside. Uh, some people do take their images inside when they first test it. I see some pictures of desks and water bottles. But uh, get out there, walk the streets, start mapping that way. That's the best way to get familiar with it. So from a car, we can. Uh, we can give you a mount down at our table downstairs that'll stick to a windshield. We're almost out of them. And there's several others we could recommend that are uh, a lot more advanced than just the one that we give out. When you're walking, it's great to just hold the phone in front of you. It's going to be horizontal, of course. And focus on the, the street as the horizon line. You'll see that in the lens here. And finally, with a bicycle, you can get mounts as well that will keep your mobile phone attached. Although, caution, make sure you secure it well. I prefer to use a GoPro on a bike just because it's better attached and has some uh, also correction in the images for the, the bumpiness. So on the mobile phone, when you open the app, this is what you'll see. So there's the line across the center. 
That's where you'll want to kind of center on your scene, maybe look for the horizon. The red button, like a recording button, will get things started. It'll turn to a red square as you're capturing. At the top right, you see A for automatic by default. If you switch that over, it'll turn to M for manual. That means you just have to tap the button each time you want to take a photo. So when you're in automatic mode, it's going to automatically capture by default in a distance-based method. So as it detects your GPS moving, I think default is every three or five meters, it will take a picture. If you don't know if the GPS is going to be that accurate, you can switch to time-based, and then it's going to just capture uh, at the time that you set, so maybe every three seconds. And you can adjust this in the settings, but also the, the time base will keep capturing when you're not moving. So be careful of duplicates, but on our server side, we should also clean that up for you. So here's a little more look at the settings. Uh, again, you can set the distance threshold, the time threshold, and you can also make it so as you rotate, taking kind of a panorama, it'll tell you how often, how many degrees, it will capture a new photo. So you can kind of create a sort of 360 experience. When you upload to Mapillary, we'll actually blend those photos into one another as you rotate the camera. And finally, you can pause on face down. So a nice way to just quick capture when you put the phone down, and then you can bring it up again and get started without having to hit too many buttons. Uh, so another setting, uh, this one's this one's one I wondered about at first. I wasn't sure what the arrow meant, so I figured it out pretty quickly. There's an upward arrow. That means that you're facing forward. If you tap that when you're not in capture mode, you can then choose the direction the camera is facing. That's going to offset it from your direction of, uh, of travel. So if you are in a car or on the tram, I tried it here in Frenza, and you're facing sideways, you can set that to be oriented to the left and then it will know when you upload your imagery that despite moving forward, the camera angle is going to be 90 degrees offset. So that's a great way to just make sure that you get extra accuracy on the, the camera angle. And one thing to be aware of is tunnels, uh, high buildings, trees, other things that block your GPS. You'll get a warning from the app. It'll tell you GPS is good. It'll go to red, say GPS is bad or green GPS is best. So you're looking usually for the green. Uh, and you'll notice as you get in the tunnel, it should give you the warning. It may capture one last image before it automatically pauses. And as you upload that one, you may see it drifts quite a bit on the map. So you'll understand the results there, but it's something to keep an eye out for and see ahead of time, while the app will also try to stop you from getting too many inaccurate images that way. So once you've captured, the final step is to upload. If you haven't signed up or logged into your account yet, this is where you'll be prompted. And at this point, you're going to have many sequences. So each one of these cards on that left side screen represents a sequence of images. So in this case, I have one of two images and one of four images. Just a very quick test for me. Usually it'll be, I think, about 300 images is where it will cut off. So if you're capturing continuously on a bicycle, uh, riding for, let's say, an hour, you should have several 300 image sequences. That keeps the batch size small and just allows us to process those one at a time. So hitting upload, you can, uh, with the, I guess with the bottom right green button, it's going to upload everything. Or the single arrow on each card will upload only that sequence. So whatever works for you, but I usually just go for all of them. There may be reasons that you want to only do a batch at a time. And usually this will not work on your mobile phone network. You have to enable in the settings to upload when you're not on Wi-Fi. So if you have an unlimited SIM card, then you can go ahead and send it all. But by default, we'll try not to consume all of your data. There's also the feed. Uh, this will tell you what you already uploaded. You can see that in your profile and you can open up your images from your feed to go ahead and navigate through them. So you'll see the image, you'll see the location on the map, as well as in blue, your own location. The Explore button, that's the bottom left one on the mobile app. Uh, it's similar to the feed, but it's going to take you to the map by default. 
This should be one of the first things you see when you first install and open the app. And it'll let you explore the world, see what imagery is out there. But it's also a nice way to plan where you want to capture. If you want to go fill in gaps where there's no imagery near you, this is a good way to see it. You can also change the base map in this. So in the settings, you can choose something like a satellite imagery layer or some other graphical base maps. We also are adding back in the leaderboard. Uh, we had to restructure some of our server infrastructure for this, but it's back in the app. So you'll be able to see uh, this week, this month, all time, the top mappers, how many images. So it's a great way to, to see kind of who's competing against you. Uh, a lot of people like to search. So in their city, uh, in their country, uh, in the US, like by state, Australia by state, and just see who else is out there. And you have a lot of people jumping up and down in the one and two position these days. So uh, every image will count there. That's what you're measured by for ranking. And it should update pretty much daily. So it's a good way to check where you're at. We have a, a beta feature also in the iPhone app. So this is called MapLine Missions. And MapLine Missions are something that we generated by creating these squares that um, are probably a couple hundred meters on each side. And these are using Bing quad key systems, so they follow the shape of a map tile. These were generated anywhere that the map, uh, OpenStreetMap, contains commercial or retail land use, uh, anywhere there's a density of points of interest, or anywhere that was determined from satellite imagery to be urban areas, and finally intersecting public transit stations. Uh, so not stops, but actual stations that are a little bit bigger. So the idea there is these are pedestrian-friendly places. It's places where people spend a lot of time. So if you're capturing imagery in these, you're helping provide more substance to improve OpenStreetMap uh, for that kind of pedestrian user. And the idea here is we tell you how many images you should capture and how many kilometers of road to finish the mission. So if you capture imagery on every road inside of that square, you'll finish it, and that one's considered done. So right now in Japan, we're running a competition to see who can get the most of these in one month. And there's a great t-shirt that'll come out. Uh, I don't have an image of it, actually. But I think someone maybe in the FOS4G might win that contest and be wearing it soon. So a closer look at missions. Uh, as you enter the missions, it's going to show uh, where you've captured already. So you can track that. It'll tell you how many images you have remaining in the square. And it will let you, therefore, just kind of plan your capture just in that one area before moving on to the next one. So away from the pedestrian capture, looking at on the car, there's a few ways to mount a camera. Uh, so you'll see a mount for a mobile phone on the left, sticking to the windshield. It's great for the interior. And on the exterior, you can see an action camera. This one's mounted with a magnet and uh, about a three meter power cord. So that's great, though be careful as you go higher speeds. Uh, these magnetic ones have done really good for me under 100 kilometers per hour, but a super high wind in the Mojave Desert will take it off. So I recommend that for kind of urban driving at a slow pace. Uh, so looking at the screen of the GoPro, you have here the option to set field of view, you can set intervals. Uh, so this is photo mode. So I like to set maybe a two second interval if I'm walking, half second if I'm driving in a car, and the wide field of view is helpful for capturing the whole scene. Uh, however, you can also capture in video mode, and the GoPro is gonna GPS tag both videos and photos. And in video mode, when you upload that to Mapillary, we're gonna sample the best frames um, that also have the best GPS, so it increases your chance of having more accuracy. A 360 camera is very similar. A lot of ways to mount it to a vehicle. You can hold it on top of a selfie stick. Uh, all of this is great, just getting it high off the ground. There's an interval photo mode on that once again, but also there's a video mode. So both of those can be geotagged with the right cameras. And once you upload them, again, we will select the best frames with the best GPS. Uh, we also support the Street View video mode. Uh, that's a cam file format. So a lot of newer, higher quality 360 cameras have that. And uh, just this last month, we started supporting upload for that. So 
That should make it really easy to use the command line right now and soon the graphical uploader to, to upload those. So these are the two uploaders I just mentioned. Um, one is called Mapillary Tools. One is called the Mapillary Uploader. So the uploader is just this desktop app. You can drag and drop a folder full of images. You can drag and drop a video. And it's going to handle that, give you a preview, show you the camera angles, the location of the imagery, allow you to do some compass angle correction on a whole sequence. And it's going to tell you how many had bad GPS. So in this case, you can see 74 errors from probably a tunnel. So you'll hit upload. Those will go up. And they'll be finished. Now coming to the command line, uh, it's just as easy to use. You're going to have pretty much one command that you use really often. There's a lot of other custom ones for people who have advanced ideas about modifying or organizing their imagery beforehand. Uh, but in this case, you'll just use the Mapillary Tools Python package. You're going to do process and upload as the function and just set the path to where your images are located. Uh, and you can do the same with a video, just setting a, a path. It's going to ingest it. A lot of dialogues here. Uh, but generally, you're going to see it's finding how many images. It's finding the file size. I don't have the done screen there. But it will tell you the end, upload done. So it will be clear. And that's a great way to upload huge batches of imagery as well. Um, and you can get pretty advanced with that, like programmatically running it on, uh, on multiple folders as you bring in big batches of imagery. So a little better than clicking and dragging into the uploader uh, graphical app. And finally, you want to view the images once they're uploaded. So a lot of places that you can see Mapillary are integrated uh, or make use of it. So our website, you have the rapid editor for OpenStreetMap, uh, Jossum as well. You can host your own tile server with a base map. And you can pull vector tiles from Mapillary in on MapLibre. Uh, you can do pick for review, several different mobile apps and editors, and even ArcGIS as well. So we try to be everywhere as much as possible. And if you have a request for somewhere, you can let us know, and we'll try to help you get that working. That one's out of order. <laughs> Look, there we go. Yeah, and finally, editing the map is a good way to go. So once again, we just mentioned these two tools, but you can find them at these URLs. We have the developer tools for Mapillary. So mapillary.com slash developer is the hub for all of that. Uh, the open source Mapillary JS library helps with viewing images in a JavaScript context. And you can do pip install Mapillary to get the Mapillary Python SDK and start working with that to make API requests. You can also start testing the apps. Um, you can visit this URL and it'll invite you to sign up for the Mapillary beta testing program. So that will make it so you get the, the preview beta builds on the mobile app uh, instead of only the latest stable release. And that's a great way to see new features before they're official. And finally, we invite you to join the community. So web forums. Uh, we have a Facebook group, Mapillary Worldwide. That's something over 500 members there. Uh, and then we have a Telegram group as well. Uh, a lot of discussion going on there with questions on cameras, uh, advice for editing sequences and images. So great community all around. And you can see what other people are up to around the world. And that's all. So I'll take your questions. Thanks.